In line with government policy of diversification of the economy, the steel sector, according to President Muhammad Buhari, is set for a new awakening. We look at the activities and offerings of Total Steel Limited in our corporate report segment. As government gears up to enforce various tax and audit laws in Nigeria to ensure compliance, taxation and accounting firms, including Olutayo Badinon and Co. Bolaho Yegoke and Co. are set to offer value addition services. We have a report on taxation and accounting practice. Plus, we continue with our special on a Smart Cities Report, Urbanization and Cities Challenge, as more professionals continue to speak on this important segment of the program. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello, a very good day to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks you for joining us for today because we have quite a loaded program for you today. We're going to be talking about something unusual, accounting and taxation, audit and more. The federal government has promised to actually increase the taxation and also ensure compliance by all firms operating in Nigeria. What are the organizations doing to offer the best services? We talk about all that including our total report segment on the program when we come back right after this commercial break stay with inside business we'll be right back to give you all the details <music> Welcome back. He's still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. At a very important meeting with some businessmen in Qatar recently, the president, Muhammad Buhari, told businessmen that the federal government diversification effort is going to be total. And the steel sector is so key to industrialization in Nigeria. And he did promise that our Jakuta steel will be revitalized during his own term in Nigeria. And to this end, inside business has sought to speak with some key operators in the steel sector in Nigeria, including the Managing Director, Chief Executive of uh, Total Steel, the Kaduna-based organization, on the offerings and also what the sector means to Nigeria in terms of industrialization. Decades of efforts by the federal government to develop the nation's steel sector and make Nigeria self-sufficient in iron and steel products are firming up with the recent pronouncement by the President Muhammadu Buhari to revive the sector and get Ajakuta steel back on stream again, which is one of his seven campaign promises. This promise indeed has further strengthened the spirit of operators in the sector, including Total Steel Limited Kaduna, to revive and review their operations. What really is the focus of Total Steel Limited in the steel sector value chain? Yeah, I started off as a young lawyer who was frustrated by too many adjournments in my cases. And I had a lot of friends in, in uh, Delta Steel and Ajakuta Steel. And naturally, you know, humans gravitate towards where they have friends. So I started by bringing in iron ore, uh, oxide pellets, and so on from CVRD, which is now Valley uh, in Brazil, to support production of uh, steel in Delta Steel in the 1990s. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's what, that's how it started. Indeed, for any nation that desires industrial and technological advancement and addresses its unemployment problems, the steel industry is said to be the fulcrum on which that desire is hoisted. This is why it has become expedient for the government to pay serious attention to the development of the sector to achieve laudable milestone in its industrial revolution and the change agenda. Understanding the importance of the steel sector to Nigeria's industrialization quest, what then are challenges and how could they be addressed? A very big challenges, but the biggest of it is really access to capital. Uh, we're a country that must begin to look at the indigenous people being given access to capital. It's not, uh, my, my big question is, yes, we want foreign investments, we welcome foreign investments, but for God's sake, in all countries that have developed, the quantum of foreign direct investment is always less than 10% of the total investments. Whether you are talking about agriculture, or you are talking about textiles, or you are talking about steel, this country can never develop unless the locals up the 
human capital gap, learn all the science and technology of steel production, of textile making, and invest. Stakeholders in the steel sector agree that no country can advance without the steel sector, since it's the primary ingredient for any commercial and business activities to take place. They want government to pay particular attention to the development of the sector in Nigeria to become one of the 20 lending industrial economics in the world by the 2020 and beyond. Um, it, it's a very, see, human capital deficit in Africa is a big hindrance to development. In other words, we spend very little in giving practical and technological education to our people. Recently, uh, I think uh, about a year ago, I had the opportunity of going to JOSH to present some award on behalf of the Media Trust Group, the publishers of Daily Trust, to someone who was taking a local initiative. The check was altogether about five million naira to encourage local. And I had something about technology incubation centers. I think that's fantastic. It's a good idea. It should be escalated to something much bigger. What we must be asking ourselves in Nigeria today is, why are we not producers of what we use? If we use mobile phones, why are we not producing mobile phones? If we use... Total Steel Limited started out essentially as a mini steel rolling mill producing and marketing rebars in Nigeria in the early 1990s. The plant was located in the commercial and industrial heartbeat of Lagos and had a melting furnace and rebar rolling mill with an annual capacity of 20,000 metric tons of rolled products. Following its acquisition by the Rama Brothers Group in 1997, Total Steel Limited took over the management and running of the group steel business, which over the years, among other activities in the sector, was involved with the supply of steel consumables and spare parts to the Delta Steel Company Limited and other steel plants in Nigeria. It later on went into the importation of oxide pellet for conversion into the billets and the Delta Steel Company for other steel rolling mills in Nigeria. It also imported billet for rolling mills in Cantina, Jaws, Oshobo Steel Rolling Mills, among others. Total Steel's involvement with the Delta Steel Company further grew into products sharing joint venture with consequent initiative to produce the first one almost 100% made in Nigeria steel using iron oil concentrate from the National Iron Mining Company in Itakwe Kogi State. The company has, because of this initiative, been recognized as a pace setter in the private sector for its contribution to the successful development of steel technology in Nigeria. The three-phase joint venture was successfully completed and provided the platform for the successful bid for the rehabilitation and management of Delta Steel Company by Total Steel in conjunction with the technical partner Voss Alpine Industrial Services of Austria. Consequent upon this initiative, major steel companies and merchants like Ajakuta Steel Company, Joe Steel Rolling Mill, Oshobo Steel Rolling Mill, Mayor Engineering, Katsina Steel Rolling Mill and several others have continually relied on Total Steel Limited for attainment of their production and sales targets. Indeed, Total Steel Limited's relevance in the sector is enormous, hence the company's contribution to the growth of the steel sector will continue to be appreciated. Therefore, um, from the point of view of uh, Naseni, what their program is and what they are doing, I do know that uh, a lot of patriotic efforts have been put in by various CEOs of that uh, organization. But I, I do believe that what can really help more today is to get them to buy into the national strategic plan not just the national uh, reindustrialization plan, but also the plan that will go spe into specifics, taking te te telecommunications, computers, mobile phones, and other tablets. What can we do? Not just to assemble them in Nigeria. How can we produce components and actually roll back imports of these finished goods?
Our special report on the steel sector will continue on Inside Business next week in the next edition of the program where we'll be talking with so many key operators in this important sector. When we come back, right after this commercial break, we'll talk about taxation, audit, and accounting practice in Nigeria. Still with Inside Business, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. In various economies, uh, developed economies to be precise, taxation issues are key. And indeed, many, many nations, including the United States, have fund its budget through tax. And in Nigeria, the federal government has insisted that it's not going to be business as usual and has called on the Federal Inland Revenue Service to go after all tax-related issues with vigor and strength. Many tax exemption and audit firms are also gearing up to offer value in relation to these particular issues. And we've been talking with so many of them, including Oluta Yobadin and, and Company, on the offerings and many other activities relating to the issue of taxation and audit services in Nigeria. One of the major functions of government, especially developing countries such as Nigeria, is the provision of infrastructural services such as electricity, schools, hospitals, pipe bomb water, good roads, as well as ensure a rise in per capita income, poverty alleviation to mention a few. For these services to be adequately provided, government should have enough revenue to finance them. The task of financing these enormous responsibilities is one of the major problems facing governments, especially with the current limited resources available. Then there is need to carry the citizens and the government along, hence the imposition of tax on all taxable individuals and companies, organizations to augment government financial position, which is essential. What are the principles of collecting tax and the government policies as regard taxation in Nigeria? Mr. Olutayo Obadino, a chartered accountant with the firm of Olutayo Obadino & Co. and Mr. Bolaho Oyegoki, also a chartered accountant, is of the firm of Bolaho Oyegoki & Co. They spoke on the taxation system and the Nigerian government position, essentiality and also informed the position on these issues. Well, my advice will be in two ways. First, to the state, and second, to the taxpayer. There is a need for the state to train their staff working in the internal revenue services. There is a need to train them so that they will have sound understanding of the tax rule. And if possible, business process knowledge. The principle in collection of tax okay. is actually very simple. Uh, in taxation, we call it canon of taxation. Yes, the first is that the tax you want to, you as tax administrator, that you want to collect from the taxpayer must be beneficial. If you must not spend more than the tax you want to collect. You shouldn't be chasing bad money with good money. For example, you want to collect tax of 1 million and you have to spend 2.5 million to collect it. I mean, there is no sense in that. So the principle of that particular issue that the tax you want to collect must have economy is there. Very seriously because it is the individual that must contribute money to run the state. You see, if you remember, there were very old colonial days, and I mean, several years ago, when the development, the, the, the rural system was not in existence. You see, that a village will need to open the road to the world. The important 
thing is that along the line, everybody should follow the law. The law is very clear about what they're supposed to do, and as long as possible, they should do that and not go below that. Uh, as long as they don't go below that, they can set alarm. Government should set alarm. Yes, government has always enacted various tax laws and reforms existing ones to stand the test of time. These laws include Tax Management Act, Companies Income Tax Decree, among others. All these are aimed at ensuring adherence to tax payment and discouraging tax evasion and avoidance. Why then is the issue of double taxation quite pronounced in Nigeria, for which various private sector operators continue to protest against? Well, the legal functions of an auditor are, number one, you will have to go out there into the, uh, into the client's office and uh, design your program in such a way that you will find out what is happening in the organization. One of the major challenges in audit is that uh, clients do not pay you at the right time. And some clients do not value the work that you have done. You know? So, so in the way, as I'm speaking now, I have a client that is only Not even to government, except you are able to secure court order that should release that. So you discover that is a, a, a manager of, an, of a company or owners of a company should find it so comfortable to open up to their auditors or task consultants. You should find it quite easy. To open up because the rule of that confidentiality is there, and by this same rule, I cannot act for you and someone you are in conflict with. Probably you are thinking of buying or take over another company. I cannot act for you and act for the man you want to uh, take over his organization. One of the most frequently discussed issues in Nigeria is how to solve the economic hardship in country and how to create an industry base that can guarantee self-sustaining economic development. Also, one wonders why a country which is richly endowed with the necessary human and material resources and which the people pay tax be turned a heavily indebted country. What then are the critical role of tax and audit consultant in all this? The principles in collecting tax in Nigeria is that we have different laws that guide this uh, profession. And uh, we have the state government collecting some tax, we have the local government collecting some tax, and the federal collecting some taxes. And this well organized. Like I said before, that report on taxation and our accounting practice in Nigeria, if you are not aware of what is currently going on in terms of taxation, the Federal Inland Revenue Services is actually calling on all the companies registered in Nigeria to ensure they get their TIN and complied with taxation and tax-related issues and practice in Nigeria. And this is a very good thing for tax and audit firm in Nigeria to ensure they offer add value addition to this important sector. Moving on now on today's edition of the program, it is about smart cities now and what are the challenges this particular issue is facing, especially with practitioners, town planners and more in relation to the urbanization and cities challenge. Our report on this continue right now. Urbanization is a global phenomenon which is currently sweeping through developing countries like a wildfire. As a result of the magnitude and the speed of urbanization in these countries, many governments appear overwhelmed and unable to cope with its challenges. 
Consequently, basic infrastructure and services are rarely provided as urban growth proceeds haphazardly with a severe threat to the well-being of the people and society. Lagos, Nigeria is one of the largest urban areas in the developing world which is currently grappling with the challenges of urbanization especially in the areas of housing provision and other social amenities. In any nation, before you can start anything, you need the contribution of a town planner. Uh, if you don't do that, then you, you end up in slums. People will just uh, build haphazardly, without roads, without drains. There will be no space for police station. There will be no, no space for churches. There will be no space for schools. There will be no space for clinics or hospitals. People will just be building. They will forget all these things. But if a town planner had started first, then he would have allocated land for all these uh, social and uh, community uses. One of the major issues is that, uh, one, policy have been made, but the implementations are not there. The, for now, the national urban policy, they are supposed to be a national planning commission who is supposed to be in place, who is supposed to make a very blueprint for the cities, for towns and cities, regions and other areas. At present, if the government can make a policy that... So, my take on that is, we need a smart city, a smart city is a city that is driven much of the time by technology, you know. Uh, it will be cleaner, it will be saner. But the point is, how do we get out of the pit in which we are now? Uh, and I think uh, one of the ways is to make people realize that a cleaner environment it's not about the cleanliness alone, it's about your health. And it could even translate to your wealth. Now, if you take, for example, let's take the ordinary Baba. Africa has increasingly become an urban continent with an average annual growth rate of 3.3% of urban dwellers between 1990 and 2000, the highest in the world. This expansion of Africa's urban population has persisted at a rate that greatly exceeds the rate of creation of possibilities for gainful employment for job seekers and other auxiliary services. In Nigeria, the issue of urbanization and government policies and advocacy have all been questioned, hence the need for the essentially bring the issue forward, especially with the new government of President Muhammad Buhari. However, the margin of the housing ministry with works and power and is silent on the issue of the heat to urban development may well be explained to practitioners and industry players. When you are talking about housing, you are talking of uh, urban planning. Okay. Because a collection of houses, without houses there cannot be a town. It is a number of houses that come together to make a village and a town and a city. So there should be houses before you know we have a town but what we are saying is that there should be a plan for these houses before a house is built at all there should be a layout there should be a plan how many people will be in the city what is what what, what is the arrangement for water what is the arrangement for electricity what is the arrangement for roads there should be a plan before even a building is put on it's a major issue then imagine it with uh, other, other ministries like uh, power. Because power on its own has its own peculiar problem. And uh, uh, which other one? Works and housing. Honestly, it's another very big problem which has a lot of impact in city development and growth. So, which means there may likely be a reduction in the revenue, in the allocation of funds to that ministry will soon to affect them 
deeply. Ah. I think all Nigerians should be worried, uh, but not so. The professionals should be should be more worried. Uh, professional town planners, uh, especially, because while we were in a smaller units, uh, the Ministry of Works has seen an urban development that even reflected urban development. But there wasn't much uh, being done. In all these, what are the contributions of practicing firms and the offerings in relation to urbanization and smart cities and the development in the urban centers in Nigeria? In any nation, before you can start anything, you need the contribution of a town planner. Uh, if you don't do that, then you, you end up in slums. People will just uh, build haphazardly, without roads, without drains, there will be no space for police station. There will be no, no space for churches. There will be no space for schools. There will be no space for clinics or hospitals. People will just be building. They will forget all these things. But if a town planner had started first, then he would have allocated land for all these uh, social and uh, community uses. Uh, honestly speaking, the addition of company consultants that our annual general meeting, EGM, is coming up uh, in October, uh, next month, right? And we are choosing a, we are choosing a, a, the theme of that uh, EGM is rebranding some planning progress. No, the, the point is before a city becomes smart, you must have first determined what goes where. But the issue of smart cities for it to, for the city to be connected technologically uh, you, you can know where what is and all that somebody must create those hubs first and that's the town planner a big projects uh, there is coming up about a 19 floor hotel development within the lucky scheme one that for some job with the uh, Minister of Com Federal Minister of Communication, which we hope we'll be able to gather. We will turn our best also. We are registered as environmental uh, uh, agency with the, uh, the National Environmental Agency. We have authority to prepare environmental audit reports. Luxury Pavers Nigeria Limited is a company that manufactures paving stones and we take pride in manufacturing paving stones that have never been seen in the industry in terms of the different designs, in terms of the different colors that are also available. So instead of just selling a customer black and red paving stones, which is what most other paving stone companies do, they force whatever they have on you. What we do is we customize the paving stones based on your current building. Um, as much as I like to support Nigerian manufactured products, we use Dangote cement, we use um, stone dust which is also from Nigeria, but one of the key ingredients which we use is our, our colors. Well, that's about all we have time for on Inside Business Africa for today. Don't forget, we've talked about taxation, we've talked about the steel sector, and we've also talked about the issue of urbanization and smart cities challenge. And indeed, you can also follow us on our social media page by watching us online on our Inside Business Africa's uh, website, www.insidebusinessafricang.com, and uh, watch also the full episode of today's edition of the program, and also download this uh, transcript of this episode. And indeed you can also follow us on our facebook page instagram and linkedin all these are available the port the this particular page is also very live indeed watch us online on inside business africa ng .com. it's been kenneth odishola stevenson presenting inside business africa thank you again for watching see you next week <laughs>